All right, so I don't have a lot of time because I'm heading to the bar with some friends. But earlier today, oh, I got something in my eye. What a great way to start the video. Um, I'm chilling here with my All Valley Karate Champion hoodie. Because you know your boy is the Karate Kid. Not really. But um, earlier today I was streaming. Um, And for the second half of the stream, I did a Review the Review, which is a video series I hadn't done in a long time. But I thought about while I was on stream, because I was playing the finals, trying to unlock ranked, because I have to play like 45 more games to unlock ranked, so then I can start climbing the ranked ladder. But... Doing the review, the review, <clears throat> excuse my voice, I'm getting over a cold, not even really a cold, I just kind of lost my voice and just had a kind of sore throat, but doing the review, the review, dude, this is a horrible way to start the video, I'm just yapping, bro, I haven't done this in a while, I also had not really any idea what I was going to talk about, just like the previews of times I did these videos, anyways, long story short, dude, a minute 25 in and I got nowhere, Let's go. Um, doing the review, the review on the live stream r reminded me of, you know, the old videos I did when I was first starting out. And I was consistently doing these review, the reviews. And then I started doing those videos of me sitting down and just talking with no script, no plan. Um, just me, the camera, and just seeing what falls out of my mouth. And a couple of those videos, I think I had, you know, some pretty good times. Um, I didn't do many of them because then I stopped and then life got in the way. But doing the review, the review earlier today reminded me of, I guess, the mindset I was in at, at the time that I was doing those videos. So I figured before I head out, why not for old time's sake, do one of these videos again? And I don't really know <laughs> what I want to talk about, but I want to keep the authenticity of this series of just turning the camera on and just talking, just yapping, seeing what comes out of it. Um, now, normally, I was inside, nicer setup. I had the tripod front-facing, or the, the a normal camera, not the front-facing selfie camera. But we're chilling in my car, because why not? And... Earlier today, I was doing review the review for um, Miyazaki's final movie, which is The Boy and the Heron. And somebody left a comment. Not a comment. They left a review on Rotten Tomatoes when we were going through some of the Rotten Tomatoes. Not the critic scores. I don't care about critic scores. The audience scores, though. I, I only care about what normal, everyday people have to say about films and cinematography and I mean cinema as a whole. I don't care what you know, executive producers usually have to say. Uh, not executive producers, executives. Like the boardrooms of executives at, at, you know, all these major production companies that start putting their dumb hands on every project and then water them down and they're like, this is not good for our target audience. Executive producers are a bit different because they're at least working on the film itself. Like, they're, like, directly on the film. Whereas executives just work, like, board of executives and investors and all those people. I don't care about them. Critics, I don't care what critics have to say. Most of them are people who... I'm not even going to get into that. But normal people, everyday people, those are the opinions I care about. Because I like to see what resonates with audiences and what doesn't. Which is, <clears throat> I think, a good thing to have if I want to be well, the person who my films get critiqued, right? I want to I want to make the movies that people take a minute out of their day to write a one-star review about. If I made a movie and people all wrote one-star reviews, like yeah, that would suck, but like I still made a movie and it debuted in theaters. People saw it. Maybe one person out there liked it. But somebody left a review that said, the guy in the seat behind me in the theater 
said during the movie, this movie was written by a man who knows he's about to die. And that's been kind of sticking with me all day. Because after after that on the stream, I, I went to YouTube on the stream. I mean, you could go check out the VOD. Um, it's probably like an hour and a half in. And I looked up the video of Miyazaki from uh, the Studio Ghibli, 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 however you want to pronounce it. Of his studio's documentary. And there's a scene of him and the interviewer kind of asks him a very basic question about like the future of the studio and he kind of starts laughing a little bit and he's just like i'm paraphrasing um you can see the clip on the vod under my live streams my previous live streams is from today but he said long story short it's inevitable that the studio is gonna go on like it's gonna die at some point it's, and he says it's inevitable, so there's no point in worrying about it. Because there's nothing you can really do to stop to stop that. And I thought that was crazy because... Not crazy. I thought that was deep. For somebody to be sitting in a movie theater... Watching... This legendary man's... Final movie of his life and he's been doing movies since the 80s animated movies since the 80s that have basically all been fire i mean t tell me a miyazaki movie that sucks S the studio sure that it didn't all put out 10 out of 10 every single time most of their movies are good, though. I don't think I've ever seen a, a Studio Ghibli movie that I didn't like. There's some that I haven't seen yet. Um, just, like, really older ones that, like, you know, just never saw them. I should. But all of the ones that Miyazaki himself wrote and, and, and created, I can't think of one that was ever bad. So the this man has such a legendary career and he's such a legendary man and he's so humble and just riddled with depression, dude. And I shouldn't I shouldn't say it like that because it's like obviously I don't know him today, but so many interviews of him over the years and so many comments on videos of people talking about like like I saw a comment um for I think it might have been in the comment section of like with the first trailer that dropped for the boy in the hair on. No, it was a comment that was in the video I showed on my live stream of him talking, um, answering that question. And somebody in the comment, a bunch of people in the comments of that of that clip. I originally saw that on Instagram, though, um, and I found it on YouTube. But in Instagram comments, there was a bunch of people saying like they're like this man has made movies that have brought happiness and joy and peace and and, you know positivity to so many people's lives but he has been so depressed his whole life and now he's at the end of his career voluntarily like he could easily make more movies obviously he's still alive but there was a lot of comments a lot of reviews on on his film this, this new the boy and the hair on a lot of the reviews were people saying this is great 10 out of 10s 10 out of 10s 10 out of 10s 8 out of 10s Five out of fives, five stars, four stars, four and a half stars. Uh oh. Oh, my light went out. <laughs> All right, hang on. Let me wave at that so it turns back on. Nice. All right. Um. What was I saying? He has one last film. And most of the comments were positive, but there were a few that said that it was weird. And weird in a way, not the characters. I saw one only one review that said the characters weren't compelling, but that's just one opinion. It's a valid opinion. It's still somebody's opinion, but it, it wasn't a sentiment that was shared amongst 
any other reviews I saw, but a lot there was a shared sentiment of confusion about the movie, of people being like, I didn't understand the direction, I don't know what I just watched, I'm kind of lost, it felt like I was watching a dream and not a movie, and then I stumbled upon one review that's in the VOD um, of somebody, and I'm paraphrasing again, because I don't, I don't have it up, but somebody saying, if you're a fan of classic animation, this movie is not going to be for you. This is kind of tilted. That this movie is not going to be for you. And then there were the shared sentiment of the movie's pacing was off. That it kind of jumped around and that it kind of sporadically threw things at the audience without a lot of explanation and very little understanding, but that those things still kind of worked. And I just think it's so telling that he's at the end of his career. This is his final movie. And instead of doing a formulaic piece, something that he knows for sure would have killed it, that he decided to do something so different with the writing. The animation, I mean, I went over it on the live stream. The animation is, it's Studio Ghibli. Like, it's always its always going to be beautiful animation. It's Miyazaki, so his standard is, is all the way up here. Like, But he did something different with the, with the writing and with the story that I feel like I'm going to have to sit on this for a bit and I might want to do like a legitimate review of the review because I only went over Rotten Tomatoes score um, reviews. <clears throat> and like in a proper review of the review, you know, we go Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, sometimes we'll do Letterboxd. But I think I want to go sit in theaters with this. Like twice in a row. Do like a morning and then a night, or like a night and a night, or honestly just back-to-back -back if I want to. That might be a bit much to see it like directly back-to-back. -back. Um, but I want to sit with this movie because there, just that, that, I can't get that comment out of my head. This is a movie written by a guy who knows he's about to die. For one human being to be out there, one person to be out there in this world... To have had that thought in their mind. To say like, I feel like I'm watching something written by a man who knows that his life is ending soon. There's something in this movie that's resonating at a deep fundamental level with some people. Probably with most people who see it. But there's something in this, there's something there that's more than the movie that's more than the sum of its parts, and I don't know what it is. So I need to see the movie to 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 um to figure that out. Like see it like two, three times maybe. Because I imagine the first sit through, I'm just gonna be kind of just let the movie give me what it gives me, and then go into it a second time, searching for that missing piece if the movie doesn't give it to me. Which is so dumb, I'm making this 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 video right now and I haven't uh, seen the movie yet. <clears throat> but there was just something about that comment, like this is a movie written by a man who knows he's about to die. And what is there for a man so successful and renowned and legendary in his craft that for his final movie, the writing to some people did not seem up to par? Is it? He was experimenting, and it didn't succeed as well as he had hoped? Or did he genuinely know, like, look, this is the last... I have a whole uh, career of successful, amazing movies that people love, and no one can take that away from me. So this one, I'm going to do something wildly different. 
I don't know. I don't know. But something about him saying, or something about that comment has been sticking with me all day. And I was hoping, dude, this is weird. This is the, I was hoping that sitting here in front of the camera and just yapping would like pull that out of me instead of just sitting in my thoughts, just like audibly. Cause you know, I mean, my previous videos like this, I would, I'd be yapping and then it would just start clicking and everything would come to me and the trail of thought would be there. And I'd say something at least slightly thought provoking, but this time it's like, there's something about this comment. I'm probably going to make a second video about this after I see the film because there's gotta be something there, man. And whatever's there for one human being to have spoken the words, this is a movie written by a man who knows he's about to die. What scene? I I want to know what scene played when the guy said that. Or what piece of dialogue did he hear that this person in the theater said that? Like during the movie to say to speak during a movie. A lot of people get annoyed by that and a lot of people find it disrespectful. But to be compelled to say something that deep as just a throwaway line in a dark movie theater, not really with a lot of people listening to you, it's like, there's something there, man. I want to figure that out. Because I feel like if I figure that out, like, why is that... Why is that sticking with me? This is a movie written by a man who knows he's about to die. I don't know why it will not get out of my head. I don't know why it's sticking with me. Man, I should start doing the series again. Even if nobody watches them, I just like talking. I like talking, bro. But yeah, I just don't, I don't know why it's sticking with me. There's something about Miyazaki. There's always been something about him. And I think maybe it's because of that I don't want to say pain because that's a lot to assume but that depression from a lot of his older interviews and like even people saying stuff about that now there's sorry there's a car driver in my um maybe I relate to him because of that because I I mean, I won't go into detail, but it's like everybody has their own pains and their depressions and their issues that they deal with. And But I just can't, dude, usually I'm so good at working out a thought to come to a logical conclusion. But maybe it's just because I haven't seen the movie yet. So it's probably foolish of me to turn the camera on and think I could just like talk myself to an answer. But I'm worried about if I if I when I see the film, if I still don't have the answer and I just turn into a madman, like watch it like three times in a row. And I'm just like, I can't figure out why this guy said that. Or maybe the first time I see it, I'll be like, OK, I see it. I see it. Hopefully that's the answer, because I hate when things don't come to me naturally. But. Yeah, I mean, we're 18 minutes and I'll stop at 20. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about that. Just the idea that somebody can sit in a movie theater watch a movie and then during the movie be like i feel like i'm watching something written by somebody who knows that they are going to die soon maybe it's the soon part that hits me because he is an older man so it's like you know you've lived a long time anything can happen at any day but like when you're older it's like you're just inching closer to the inevitable and it is inevitable and it's the only thing you have to do in life It's the only thing you have to do. You don't have to do anything in your life except for die. The only thing you have to do in life is die. You can't get around death. There's no skirting around it. There's no magic pill. There's no, let me get put on this medication. There's no, let me spend hundreds of millions of dollars to avoid death. You are going to die. It's the only thing you have to do in your life is die. That's both beautiful and terrifying because everything you're doing in your life right now, everything, I don't have to go to the bar to hang out with some friends tonight. I don't have to go meet them for some food. I don't have to. I'm going to because I have nothing else to do right now, but I don't have to, right? I live in a country that, ex that tells me you have to pay taxes. 
I don't have to pay taxes. There are legal consequences for not doing it. So you could still say you, you have to. But like, no, I could just just take the consequences for not paying my taxes. And if that ends up in jail time, like, OK, I have to go to jail. But even then, I don't have to go to jail. I could. I'm not going to get dark. There's a bunch of things you could do. Or when people say, like, you have to treat people with kindness, right? I try to. I want to treat everybody with kindness. Yeah, I don't have to. I could choose with my, the free will God gave me to be a degenerate ass to everybody I meet and interact with. If I wanted to, I could. So the only thing in life you have to do, there is nothing in your life you have to do. Even if you're a parent, even if you're a mother, you're a mother of like a brand new infant child. And they're like, oh, you have to breastfeed. Like, well, you don't have to. Right? You don't have to feed your child at all. There's a consequence for it, right? The kid's going to die if you don't feed it. Let's wind it back from dark, <laughs> dark, sad stuff. You yourself don't have to eat food or drink water there are there's going to be consequences which is inevitable death of not doing it but that's still something you have to do anyways you have to die at some point anyways and this is not an endorsement of any suicidal ideations or anything look i've dealt with that stuff multiple times in my past don't do that i'm just saying the only thing in life you have to do is die but don't let that be something that's scary to you let that be your memento mori let that be your step into some stoicism in your mind or some you know <laughs> all right we'll stop this video soon because that light's gonna get annoying if i have to do that a third time only thing you have to do is die <clears throat> so let that be something that brings you peace because everything that you're thrown with every day and you're sitting here like, I have to do this, I have to do it, like, slow down. Take a step back. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to. You, you should in the sense of things that are healthy for you and good for society and good for your neighbors and good for your family, and good for your friends, good for yourself, your future wife or your current wife, your future kids or your current kids, your future situation or your current situation, everything. There's things you should do, right? But at the end of the day, you could say, screw it all and just sit back and just be like, look, life's going to happen. The only thing I have to do is die. And until then, I'm going to do what I want to do. If I don't want to do this, I'm not doing it because one day I'm dying anyways. And none of this is going to matter anymore. But that can lead you into none of this matters. So why do I care so much about the small things. Why do I care so much about this job that's going to replace me if what I'm passionate about has nothing to do with this place? Why am I so worried about what this person has to say to, about me behind my back? A person who's never known me, who never cared about me, who's never spent a day with me, gotten to know me, doesn't even know my middle name, doesn't even really know my full name. They just call me a nickname. And I'm worried about what that person has to say about me. Why? That person's got their whole own own life and own problems to worry about. Why am I letting that come to me? Or like, you know, there's a girl I like, right? Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh my God, I want her to like me. Of course, right? It's a beautiful person. You have a crush on them. But then you got to think about it too. It's like, they're still their own person with their own life. Everything you're dealing with and going through, they're doing the same thing. So just let go of everything and just do what you want to do. And that's what Miyazaki did with this film, dude. That's like if there's people sitting there saying this feels like something written by somebody who's about to die. And there's a shared sentiment that the movie's kind of confusing and they kind of got lost in it. And they don't it wasn't what they expected, but it wasn't necessarily bad. But and there's a bunch of people saying this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. But like all of this yapping to get to the point that like. Somebody watched his movie and said, and said that line. So what about me? Oh!
See, this is why I need to do these videos more. What about me got addicted to that comment? Wow. What about me? What in me or what about me can't get that thought out of my head? Maybe it's because I want to be a filmmaker too. And I want movies that impact the world like Miyazaki's done. But what in me is so addicted to the idea that somebody was able to notice that this is a movie written by somebody who's about to die? What part of me and myself and my heart can't stop thinking about that idea? That somebody could watch a movie, his movie, my movie, anyone's movie, and notice something as deep as I feel like I'm watching the final words of a man's life. That's a heavy, heavy, heavy thing to deal with. I feel like I'm watching the last words of a man's life. Because you could Google last words of people. You can look up the last known things about people. <clears throat> and for Miyazaki, the last movie he ever made is a movie that one human being somewhere in this world that I'll never know and never meet, who could have potentially died already because the comment was from a few days ago, and you never know what happens in life. But for somebody to have to have felt that way watching his movie, that is profound, that is deep, that is confusing to me. Not confusing to me. Because now I know that it's not necessarily that somebody said that about his movie. It's there's something in me that can't let go of the idea that somebody was watching a movie and had that profound of a, of a realization. I'm watching a movie written by a man who knows he's going to die soon. That's heavy. I'm going to think about that while I drive over to meet my friends. I'm going to have an existential crisis on the drive five minutes down the road <laughs> to go <laughs> see my boys. <laughs> and they're going to be like, how you doing, bro? I'm going to be like, I'm doing good, man. I'm having a good day. Meanwhile, I'm in my own head. I'm going to be focusing on this. And then I'll go see the movie. And then I'll do a follow-up video. That will be less than 30 minutes. That will be about 15 minutes where I actually have my answer. So this is cool. This is cool, actually, that I did this video before seeing the movie. Because now I can... I can toy around with that. Perfect timing for me to leave anyways. Somebody just pulled up and I have to move out of the driveway. So, thank you guys for watching.